In this video, we're going to be covering graph algorithms. I'm going to show you the basics of what a graph is. I'm going to show you some examples of what it might look like, the components that comprise of it, and exactly what type of problems you can expect to solve using graph algorithms. So let's say in uh, you are at your house and you wanted to go all the way over to the store across the street. Well, what you would do is you would go outside and you would walk all the way there. This is essentially a graph. Each graph is comprised comprised of two different components. The first component is known as a vertex and the second component is known as an edge. In our case, a vertex is simply just another name for a destination. We have one destination which is your house and another destination which is the store. And the edge is simply the path that connected the two together. An edge, simply put, is just something that connects two nodes together and a node is simply a destination. Now, let's talk about the types of different edges you can have. The first type is the one we just saw, which is known as a unidirectional edge. A unidirectional edge is an edge where you can go from one node to another and that node back. You can go in either direction. In this case, A can get to B and B can get to A. It is most often denoted by just a straight line between the two. However, on the flip side, you can have a directional edge. And this is what a directional edge looks like. It is simply the same thing except with an arrow at the end denoting which direction you are allowed to go in. In our case, we can go from A to B, but we cannot go the other way around from B back to A. That is what a directional graph is. We can also have what is known as a weighted graph. A weighted graph is simply a graph that has a cost of going from one edge to another or vice versa. So in this case, if you wanted to go from A to B, it would cost 100. 100 what? Well, that depends on your application. If A was one airport and B was another airport, then maybe that 100 would be in dollars. There are multiple different applications you can have when it comes to weighted graphs. And of course, an unweighted graph is simply a graph where there is no cost of going from one to another, just like we have seen. And finally, you can combine directional and weighted graphs to end up with a graph that is both directional and weighted. So as we can see here, we can have A go to B, but B cannot go to A. And if A did want to go to B, it would cost 100, 100 whatever. So here's another example of a directional graph. There are a couple of things to note here. And these are the types of graphs you'll more commonly see in actual graphing algorithms and graphing problems when you're coding. So let's analyze this graph. We see here that A can go to B, B can go to uh, D and E, D can go to E, E can go to C, and finally C can go to F, and F can't lead anywhere. Now if we were to look at this graph, there are a couple of things to note. Number one, A, if we started from position A, a would be able to get to every other node in this graph. If we wanted to go from A to E, we would simply go to B, then D, and then all the way to E. If we wanted to go to F, well, we could just take another route. Either or works. The point is A can get to every single graph, uh, every single other node in this graph. And that means that A is what we like to call the mother node or a mother vertex because it is able to get to every other node in this graph, and the graph is a directional graph. Now, there's another cool thing to note here. If we wanted to actually, and this is a more probable um, example of what you would find in a real application, if you wanted to start at a destination node or vertex, let's say B was our starting point, we could determine whether or not we can get to any other node. And this is actually one of the biggest um, uh, the biggest use uh, case for uh, graphing algorithms is determining whether or not you can get from one node to another. So if we have something simple like going from B to our destination F, well, we can see that it's definitely possible through a couple of different routes. Um, however, if we sort of flip it on its head and we make instead F our starting node, 
and B our destination, well, there's no way for F to get back to B, therefore it is impossible to do that. And there are two algorithms that are really good at finding stuff like this out. They are known as DFS and BFS. DFS stands for depth first search and BFS stands for breadth first search. Now these two algorithms are a bit out of the scope for this video, but in our next video I'm going to be walking you through how to um, do both of them. So now here's another example, a more realistic example of a weighted graph. You can see here I have a bunch of different airports. We have YYZ which is Toronto, SJZ which is San Jose in California, JFK and Dallas Fort Worth. Now let's say we wanted to go from SJC to DFW. Well, this is a common application uh, for a graph algorithm. We know it's possible to get from one place to another, but we want to find the cheapest way to get there. As you can see, the direct flight is quite expensive at $1,200. However, if we were to take an alternate route by coming from SJC to YYZ, then to JFK, and then from JFK to Dallas-Fort Worth, we're actually only spending 100 plus 100 plus 100, which comes out to a total of $300 to get there, which is um, a very, very cheap way to get there compared to the alternative. And finally, here's an example of a weighted directional graph. Now, as we can see here, every single edge has um, not only a direction, but also a weight above it. Um, and this is what a graph looks like when you combine the two. Another interesting thing you can know here is if you were to start at A, you could go to B, then D, then E, then F, and then all the way back to A. When you have a graph that has at least one cycle, which means it is directed and one node can get back to itself by going through a specific path, that is known as a cyclical graph. Now, it has to have at least one, but let's say, for example, um, we were to uh, erase the connection over here. Uh, uh, uh. Let's say we were to erase the connection between F and A. Well, now there's no way for F to get back to itself, so it won't actually be able to do it. Um, however, if we were to, for example, connect C to A, well, we now have an, at least one cycle here again because A can get back to itself by going through B, then C, and then back to itself. So even though the cycle doesn't contain the entire graph, it is still said to be a cyclical graph because at least one node can get back to itself. I hope this video helped. If you found value in it, please consider subscribing. Leaving a comment really helps the YouTube algorithm so I can get more videos out there. And in the next videos, we will be going over DFS and BFS and showing you the applications of it. Thanks for watching.